Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we're talking about another video game and another franchise that's getting woke and pro-progressive and leftist once again. Just in time to get all this liberal stuff out there right before the election too. I'm of course today talking about not only Star Wars, but a new Star Wars video game called Squadrons. In that video game, they have a certain character who appears to be Alphabet now in their main storyline. And in addition, I believe you can make your own characters and pick your own pronouns and stuff like that too. So it's really going out of its way to add this whole influence into the Star Wars slash video game universe. And for those who don't know, it appears Star Wars Squadron is some sort of spiritual sequel or follow-up to the Star Wars Rogue Squadron games, which were pretty popular in the 90s and early 2000s. They're games I'm particularly familiar with. And essentially, they're based in the Star Wars universe, and they see the players driving around different spaceships. Usually spaceships, sometimes there's a biker level or something like that, like a hover bike or uh, some of the hover vehicles and stuff. But usually it's spaceships flying around, dogfighting, you know, different kinds of like military operations. Sometimes you got to protect a caravan. Sometimes you got to blow up a weapon or fly through something like they'll have the Death Star level in there and you have to fly inside their giant Death Star and blow up the core, things like that. It's pretty cool. It's an awesome series. I'm not sure about the new one. I haven't got to play it yet. I'd like to. It looks pretty cool, but I am am worried. I am worried about this new story. It sucks th- to see them going down this woke path. And I think it's coming up in two instances that are worth going over today. The first is talking more about those pronouns and how they affect the story in the game and how they're kind of infecting the whole thing there. I don't think it's going to be ruined. I think it might just be a small footnote, but it's worth mentioning because these kinds of things tend to bubble up. And if you look at the cast of characters, you'll see it's possibly more woke than we even thought. And in addition, later on, we'll talk about a review of this game that mentions and calls out the Empire, which is a kind of group within Star Wars, and it calls them a reference featuring a certain World War II villain group. They're going to reference that in relation to Star Wars. So we'll get to all that soon. We're going to cover this whole story back to front. But first, let's take a quick moment to check out our sponsor. In this day and age, it's a really scary time to be a cop or law enforcement in the United States of America. There's a lot of anti-cop rhetoric going around out there. So we need to support our boys in blue more now than ever. That's why today I'm offering you guys this free police coin that is available only to the No BS audience. All you have to do is pay for shipping and you could be the proud owner of this beautiful golden coin that represents the police officers in our country, the true heroes of our day and age. The Brave Patriot is offering this deal for a limited time. So get your free coin today. Make sure you click on our exclusive link below this video. And again, they're free. You only have to pay the shipping. So make sure you check out the link below this video and thanks for your time. Now back to the show. Great. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump into the first part of this story. Here's an article that says Star Wars Squadron's character uses they and them pronouns. Now that's already pretty telling. It's not the end of the world. Like I'm not going to be super worried about it. Like I'm not trying to be against that. Like I think we go over this each time these stories come up, but this is just kind of an indication of things to come, of way things are going. It's also not the first time this is happened in a video game. We've seen this over and over. Video games getting woke, having more female protagonists taking over and bashing the men like what happened earlier this year with The Last of Us. And in addition, we've seen Star Wars get woke before. Star Wars has been really going downhill ever since Disney took over. Sure, they had a few good movies, 2015, 2016, but the sequels of those have gotten significantly more woke, significantly worse too. So they're definitely getting woke and going broke. Sure, they're still making money though. It's not like a literal broke, like you're not making money. They're not getting canceled necessarily, but they had one of the best franchises of all time. And now people just kind of don't care about it anymore. They've ruined it with bad stories, with feminist characters in the movies. And now the video games are getting this kind of influence too, albeit in a game that looks pretty cool and could be great. Star Wars Squadrons has officially released today. And if the reviews are to be believed, it looks to be like another hit from Motive Studios and EA. So much so that writers have been giving bits and pieces of information out on Twitter. One tidbit of info revealed that one of the new Star Wars characters uses they, them pronouns. The reveal was tweeted out by Mitch Dyer, a writer of both Star Wars Squadrons and Star Wars Battlefront 2. There was no real incentive for Dyer to tweet about the character, Keo Venzi's pronouns in this new Star Wars game, but more than a few commentators were happy to hear the announcement all the same. Some, however, felt this reveal was Dyer trying to 
look for recognition for a small crumb of queer representation. Yeah, I think we could get on both sides of that. Here's the tweet from Dyer. It says, friendly PSA, as people start talking about characters, Keo's pronouns in Star Wars are they and them. Thank you. So he kind of is like expecting a pat on the back. To me, it does seem very cheap. And like with a lot of these other announcements, not just in these games or Star Wars, it just seems like they're trying to do it for publicity. They're trying to get attention. They want the pats on the back. You know, they want to be given like a medal or something. And I think what's interesting is it seems even some of the alphabet people themselves are realizing that. In addition, though, they're actually kind of asking for more representation. They're trying to say, hey, we need more than this. Like it's never enough for those kinds of groups. So there is that bad side. But at the same time, I think they just realize that they're being like tokenized. They're being used as these pawns by companies and corporations and big tech and stuff like that. This is all involved in companies like that. And they're just trying to get recognition. They're trying to get, you know, virtue signal points. They also want to sell more games. So it's a bit of an advertisement. And I would say that is part of the reason this is so bad. It's like perverting the whole movement. It's trying to like piggyback on people that actually might have suffered. Like I'm not going to sit here and pretend like every gay, lesbian, alphabet person had an awesome time growing up. Like I'm sure they had a fair even chances in the modern world. But if you go way back in the past, there were troubles. There are still places that might be, you know, bigoted or offensive or tough to grow up. That goes the same for, you know, all kinds of identities. Straight people have issues too. But the point is this movement, if it is having any credibility, if it has any kind of message and you believe in that, people like Star Wars and this writer are just kind of kind of exploiting that to advertise their game, to try and make more money and to just throw this in there for no reason. There's the character. I could see them being they or them. It's just kind of like this androgynous character. But the other thing is just weird. It's just like, think about this story. It's not even like realistic or like interesting. It's weird because we're talking about like an alien. You know, they could have any kind of pronoun. Their pronouns could be blocks. You know, it could be any word. Like their pronoun could be tool or tulada, you know, like male or female, tool or tulada. Like I'm just making up words here. And I'm just saying the point is he and her is just an American, you know, English, Earth language. These people from other planets, I mean, there's not even an Earth in Star Wars. They call the language Galactic Basic. And, you know, it just might not apply to all people from all planets. I mean, that seems to be obvious here on Earth, where there's like an obvious male and female for almost all species. So it makes sense to have him and her. But if you're on another planet, there could be like male, female, there could be Gmail, D male, you know, there could be five, six different things. I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of expanding my thoughts because that's the whole point of science fiction and Star Wars and living in this fantasy. And it just points out, it's just good to point out because it's just so absurd. It's just a total lame kind of thing. They're inserting this modern American kind of trend of PC police into this intergalactic game that's thousands of years in the future. It's just really strange. Whatever the reasoning, it's undeniable now that there are queer characters in Star Wars and that in video games, at least Star Wars is slowly becoming more and more progressive. Because of this, it shines a a very different light in, on the films, which still fail to treat its non-white characters with respect and treat same-sex romances as filler content that can be removed whenever it doesn't fit the circumstances. While this is a nice gesture, we hope that Star Wars will try a lot harder to include more LGBT community in the future. So this is showing more of the bias from this website. I didn't get to mention, but it's from gaming.com. You know, it's like a joke with the gay mean, like it's gay people that play video games. It's actually a funny name. Seems like a fine art article. It's fine for them to hope for that representation too. Like I'm not necessarily against any kind of people. Of course, you guys know I'm fair and balanced and I love everyone, but I am sort of worried about this progressive kind of move in politics and entertainment. I don't like politics taking over video games and movies so much. I don't like get woke, go broke. So there certainly are reasons to kind of raise a red flag here. And yeah, I think this game, this article has a point too, how it's kind of being tokenized and, you know, Star Wars still treats non-white characters pretty crappy like what happened with Finn. Finn was set up pretty good in the first new Star Wars movie in The Force Awakens but then he was just kind of sidetracked for the next two movies and sent on these weird side quests. By the third movie he was barely even there. He was not significant at all. Many of us thought he could be like a Jedi or something. He had a cool premise when he was this soldier that betrayed the you know the Empire or the Resistance as they're called by that time. So that was a cool setup but it didn't pay off and yeah I think it was 
there's a reason to kind of point that out. Point out the hypocrisy, especially considering Disney owns Star Wars now. Disney is very hypocritical with this stuff. Another example involving Finn is like, okay, so first they hire a black dude, and then they also have a chick as the main characters in the new trilogy. It's a guy who's black, a guy who's Hispanic, Oscar Isaac is the third main character, and then it's Ray, who's a white chick. And they're basically making it super woke, and they're putting Finn in the front line. But at the same time, when they go to sell it to China, they take him off the poster, like basically make him very small on the poster and just don't want to show the black guy because they know there's biases in other countries like China. So they kind of like try to pander to that. They'll also like re-edit movies and worry about like gay storylines, ghosts and stuff like that, because there's certain things that aren't allowed in China, which is just another sign of the hypocrisy of Disney. They're all about making money, which is another reason why this guy mentioned it in this tweet. It's just really about making money. The wokeness doesn't matter to them so, so long as they can make money. That's why they'll flip-flop and kind of go against their actual principles. And the last thing on this article is just looking at this woke kind of cast, it's like, I think this is a black chick. This is a little guy. I think a dude. It might be another chick. This is, I believe, the they-them person. This is some kind of lizard, but it just looks like a woke cast to me. Like, there's no straight white dude unless this guy is. Then he's definitely like a beta version. And it just goes to show like the kind of like over-diversifying of things which end up being anti-white. Next, I want to just mention this Kotaku review. Um, it's just a review of the game. There's not much to say about the actual review, but I just wanted to point out the funny kind of criticism that they give Star Wars here. Kotaku has been known to get very, very kind of woke. And this is the section of the review where Kotaku kind of jumps the shark and they're like, oh, Star Wars and the Empire has kind of always been like 1940s Germans. You guys know the bad guys in World War II. We can't say their name, but that N-word is what they call the Empire in Star Wars, and it just goes to show how polarizing this stuff is, how ridiculous people can become around Star Wars, how this website, Kotaku, is in the gaming industry, and they're kind of criticizing the game for having that, for having that kind of totalitarian group as the villain, but that's the whole point. Like I think they're not getting the point, because the Empire is the bad guys. There are some people that joke around, and I've seen websites or Reddit pages that say the Empire did nothing wrong. You could make an argument for that, but truly, I mean, they're the villains. That's why they're set up and they're modeled off of those kinds of 1940s villains. There's actually scenes from certain events in Star Wars that are modeled off of their kinds of uh, ceremonies and stuff like that. That's the way it's meant to look. It's like the Empire is bad, and you know, being like an influence by that is a good way to come up with a villain. That's why it looks like that. That's why they're wearing black and they're like having certain accents and stuff like that too. So it's, you know, it's just part of the story and I think it's worth mentioning because Star Wars Squadrons, this game, has sparked multiple controversies. It's not just the pronoun system and the person with the pronouns and the woke kind of advertising and the Disney hypocrisy. It's also the reviews and the reactions and the people bringing up bogus claims like these 1940s Germans that I think we all should be worried about. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. Tell me what you think about Star Wars, what you think about Squadrons, whether you'll play this game game and whether or not you think it's getting woke. Comment that all below, subscribe if you're new, and hit the bell for notifications too. Until next time, have a great day.